Oh, what's the name of that Burt Reynolds picture with the banjo? Oh, yeah, 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 that one with that retarded kid. He was good, that guy. Yeah, yeah, he was good. Deliverance. A couple of nights ago, me and Denise, we popped that into the DVD. We're about an hour into this thing, and I start thinking to myself, this story ain't very realistic. You're a lonely mountain man. They're destroying your home. They've taken your job. There is no place to set you still. You are angry. They've destroyed everything that validates your manhood. You're confused. Your sexuality is in question. You decide you're going to hit for the other side. You want yourself some man meat. I understand that. But wouldn't you wait for Burton Reynolds to come down with him? This is Critical Jim, the hitman. He loves two things, his job and old movies. This is me, Finch. I'm his mark. He thinks I'm Cletus Tout. I have Tout, Gladstone Hotel, number eight. Transfer funds to Telmark Koenigsen. M as in McQueen, 01226226F as in Fonda. T as in Tracy, K as in Kubrick. You've got 90 minutes, or I let him go.
terrific film. It's almost hypnotic. You know why? Third act. It has a third act. You don't see that in movies these days. These days, it's all about the gimmick. Great setup, great first act, then let's blow something up. And you concentrate on the gimmick and you shortchange the ending. The audience leaves unfulfilled. Man, there's nothing like a great movie. I love the movie. I mean, the old movies, you know, where it was all about the story. I've got a story. I'll bet you do. Well, this one's got it all. Prison break, jewel heist, girl. Pitch me. Pinch you? Pitch me. It's a, it's a Hollywood thing. It's where the asshole with all the power you know, makes you dance like a monkey. Well, what's in it for me? Maybe you get to live a little longer. Maybe if your story's so good, when that pager rings, I might forget where I am. I'm at the movies. Nobody remembers your job at the movies. Uh, well, let's see. Uh, I think it was 1977, New York City. No, 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 no. No one will shoot in New York, it's way too expensive. Let's call it city non-specific. And the whole thing's in the 70s? No, no, just, uh, just the beginning. Like a flashback. Perfect. Fantastic. I love the flashback. Much maligned, oft misunderstood flashback. Pitch me. It was 1977, the, uh, city's diamond exchange. There was a magician. Apologies, sister. 
Mr. Tobias. The school day ends at 3 p.m. promptly. We're not a babysitting service. No time to talk, sister. That's not it, is it? Is that how it ends? It, it field? No, no, that's not it. It's just the beginning. It was uh, September, almost three weeks to the day. I was serving seven years at the federal pen in North Carolina. Fraud, forgery, passports, documents. I gave people new identities. If you wanted to disappear, I was the guy you called. Micah Tobias, AKA the magician. 25 years grand theft. Take diamonds. Market value, 4.5 million. Never recovered. I got your birds. My job, two homing pigeons, camera, Kodachrome film, and an escape plan. My take, a cool million. This day, we became partners. I got your birds. They mark the address you gave me. Camera and film? Already in your cell. Alvin, I was under the impression this being a communal guard, we'd all take a vote before we move the scarecrow. <laughs> I woke up this morning and found out that for the past two months you've had your fist up my ass. I don't like your fist in my ass, Finch. Any free hand in this yard steals for me. You want anything, you come to me. That's the deal. That's how it works. Any questions? I don't know where you did your MBA work, but I believe you're confusing deal, which is an arrangement for mutual benefit, with extortion. Listen, motherfucker. You don't know me. Could you cut your head right off?
big of fast of that. One word, three syllables, the clue is a need to disappear. Grave digging? Mikey. Damn, shh. I thought you were in jail. I'm in a lot of trouble. I need your help. I need a, I need a kit and I need a body. Where are you? I'm in the city. There's a safe house on the east side, a bar called Fillmore's. Can you get in there? Yeah. Ask for Dolores. Tell her Sammy and Sandra. She'll know what to do. I got a friend. Vitals. 55-year-old Caucasian male, approximately 5'9", 150 pounds. I'll see what I can do. Where the hell you been? Well, I couldn't hide them in my jacket forever, could I? Way to deal with this cage. Look at this. Got a bow bottom. Huh? <laughs> you can hide things in it and everything. God, the magician and me just loves this stuff. You're not Cletus Top. No. I've got a strong feeling that before the day is out, someone's going to make use of that rather expressive, though somewhat old-fashioned term. Rebecca, United Artists, 1940. If you're not Tout, who are you? I'm Finch. Finch. Cletus Tout was a bottom feeder. <laughs> Called himself a video journalist, but he was really just a thug with a camera. Worked alone. His client list included all those tabloid shows. His mark was anybody who made their living in the public eye. There was a bachelor party for some mobster's son, a kid named Rowdy Virago. His dad, Pauly the Fist, ran a little group called the Viseri Crime Family. Rowdy was high profile. He liked that movie star status. But every time he put his face in front of a flashbulb, there was trouble. You can only imagine what price the tabloids would pay for one shiny moment in this little Alice's Wonderland. Well, Taub could imagine. He made it his mission to bring Virago down. They picked up a hooker about 11.30. Took her to a loft downtown. Town was there.
Tout thinks he's hit the jackpot. Farago's got a bit of a problem. Tout made three copies of the tape. One he kept for himself, a second he mailed to a neighbor, and a third he mailed to Paulie the Fist. Now here's the heir to the most powerful crime family in the city, and now he's on the chopping block. They got rid of the body, and nobody come call him. They thought they were home free, until Tout stuck his nose in. So they decide to kill him. Ah! It's impossible. Fuck it. I ain't pushing no more. Maybe he's got his foot on the brake. Me, for a dead guy, he drives good. I got his hands wired to the fucking wheel. Oh. What's the name of that uh, fancy place? The one that uh, makes all the donuts with the sprinkles. Oh, yeah, that place Ronnie Zavala's sister works over there. You know, I think she's a man. Yeah, she looks good. You know, she's keeping the um, sideburn short. You smell smoke? Oh! oh. Right there, here's what we got. We got a male approximately six feet tall. Uh, looks like he pissed somebody off because they shaked and baked him before they shot him. With a weapon? A small caliber machine gun. What's different about you? What? You know something? You do look different. I, uh, work out a little more lately, huh? Eating a lot of fruit. And when I call him, you need roughage. Why don't you eat the hair piece? Oh, that's it. You got a piece. <laughs> you, you know, that, it's nice. It's nice. It was a hot afternoon. I can still remember the smell of honeysuckle all along that street. How could I have known that murder can sometimes smell like honeysuckle? Double indemnity, Paramount, 1944. The film's strength is deftly crafted use of the flashback. Here's my question. Can we have a flashback within a flashback? God, I hate this place. What do we got? Some hotshot named Savian, forensic pathologist, works for the FBI. He was in with the bodies for about 10 minutes this morning. What'd our guy come up with? Nothing on the male. The female? No, yeah, they're pretty sure she was strangled. Pretty sure? Yeah. Gentlemen! No coffee in here. This isn't Quincy. Our little secret, huh? So, what do we have for lunch? Jane Doe, number 109, Charlie. Caucasian, female, 25 years old, five foot six inches tall, 112 pounds. You guys have done a print search, blood work, stomach analysis. As far as you can tell, she liked hot dogs and may have been strangled. Do you know the first thing I look at when I see a body like this? The tits. Straight for the tits. I mean, look at this. She's like a carnival ride. Saline implant. The only company who makes this model, Johnson Levy. Behind every bag, there's a serial number. Behind every serial number, there's a name. Gentlemen, meet Merrill Candide. I found four different types of spermicidal jelly, the type used in condoms. Now, either Merrill and her sweetheart have been sampling rubbers or sweet little Candide is. She's a hooker. Would somebody get Kojak a sucker? <laughs> what killed her? Compression scars in the neck, marbling. The lady's been strangled. It's all in the file. I'm gonna need another day for the hot runner. You know barbecue boy next door? All I got, a small caliber machine gun, five gallons of gas and a match. And you say the only thing that links these two is the area where they were found. That's right. Dr. Savian, phone call, line one. Thank you. Savia? One word, three syllables. The clue is a need to disappear. Grave digger? <sighs> Mikey. Finch, I thought you were in jail.
entire fence. Mikey. I know we don't have a lot of time, and I don't want to know anything. I'm going to keep it clean, and I'm going to keep it simple. Micah Tobias. Not for long. This is a freebie. You kept me out of jail by keeping your mouth closed. I thank you. My wife thanks you. My children thank you. This is the last time you'll hear from me. And I know this is the last time I'll hear from you. Here's your package. You have a computer, laser printer, camera, plenty of film, paper for photographs. You have your trim kit. There's enough here to make you both driver's licenses, supporting ID, the whole nine yards. Passports, I have a problem. I can't access one of the numbers without fingers pointing. Finch, this is going to be your job. You are now Marcel Zavoya, 55-year-old unemployed office worker. We found him with his head in the oven. His passport number, I have. This is you. Be careful with this one, man. Somebody set fire to the poor bastard. Mm. I have his address and his vitals. I even have his keys. I found them three inches deep in his thigh. You're going to have to go to his house and find his passport. How much time are you going to need? A couple of weeks. We, uh, we got a few things we got to take care of. You got $10,000 in cash. Should take you most places you want to go. This is a gift from my wife. Mm. Spend the night here tonight. Leave everything you don't absolutely need. There's a rack with clothes. Tomorrow you are dead, and I never want to hear from you again. My brother, it is so good to see you again. Good to be seen. Marcel, au revoir. Adieu. completely reinvented. You are now officially Marcel Zavoy. Your passport, birth certificate, driver's license. You gotta wear your corrective lenses to drive. You're an official card-carrying member of the double ARP. No senior should be without it. And the coup de grace, your SAG card. It's a dream you always wanted to pursue. Now that the kids are growing, you finally found that me time. <laughs> now for me, I gotta get Tout's passport number. That's first on the list. You can't dope the number? I don't want a chance. If you pick the wrong number, it's over. Shouldn't be a problem, though. It says here the guy's a journalist. My guess is he has one. Now, the real question is, when do you want to go after those diamonds? What are you doing? Hello, oh, Daddy. It's funny, and all the time I spent with the old man, he never once mentioned he had a daughter. He found her. I couldn't fault him for it. I, mean, I was only along out of circumstance. I left him alone for the time being. I was sure they had some catching up to do, more than 20 years worth. Besides, I had other things on my mind. I needed that passport number.
Hello, Mr. Tao. It is Tao, isn't it? So, you're my new neighbor. <laughs> I can tell you one thing. I cannot wait for that neighborhood watch meeting. <laughs> this came for me today. Naughty, naughty. The note said for me to hold on to it till I heard from you. It also said not to open it. Sorry. First floor. Aren't you right? Next stop, Mr. Tout, the basement. The dirty, dirty basement. Oh, it's just Mrs. Stanton. Her hobby is anything I do. Oh, it's gotten to be where I can't even bring anyone home anymore. But you, you're already home. Stop in for a drink sometime. I'm up late. Very, very late. Detective Delaney, please. Oh, Detective, I didn't expect to get you so late. Well, this is Doris Stanton. You remember that you asked me to let you know if Mr. Tout came by. Well, he's at home, right now. We'll send somebody over right away. You got a big problem. You got the wrong guy. He's at home right now, and if you hurry, you can catch him. But don't kill him in the building. And if you do, whack the old lady in number nine. <laughs> Hello, dippin' shit. How's your supper? What's wrong? What's wrong? You killed the wrong guy. That's what's wrong, putzo. That's impossible. I give you a simple job, and all you two can do is blow so much smoke up my ass, it's a miracle I ain't died of rectal cancer. We got a beat on him? He's at home right now. And you take the car, and you do it right this time. You hit him outside. You get him a couple miles away from the place. I don't want anybody seeing you do this. And dump his body on the west side this time. You got a paper trail Helen Keller could follow. We should eat first. The fuck's Helen Keller? Found. I think this town was in serious trouble. You should see the gig they pulled on his apartment. It's like a dump site. On top of that, I'm officially paranoid. I could swear I was being followed. Finch, we got a plan. Yeah, what's that? Tomorrow we go for the diamonds. We? What she knows? What the hell are you doing? You know better than to tell some dame. Dame? Let me ask you something. Do you have any idea what you're getting involved with? You're aiding and abetting a fugitive. That's a felony. Did you actually just call me a dame? What, you've been in prison since the 50s? You think you're in the Rat Pack? Listen, Ma Barker. <laughs> That's it. 
I'm not listening to another word from this guy. You're not in charge, all right? I I'm a career criminal. I should be in charge. I'm the superhero of crime. I should have a big C on my chest. Oh. <laughs> I like this girl. She's like the classic film ingenue. Bright, complicated, but with a softer side. Like Catherine Hepburn. And you know what else? I think the old man knew this was coming. That's why he brought her along. You're supposed to impress me. She's okay because she breaks into a, a pottery shop. This isn't a crime. This is this is embarrassing. Breaking into a bank. That's a crime. When's the last time you broke into some place with a key? About two hours ago. Now at least we'll make for some story in the prison mess. What are you in for? Broke into a kiln. Better yet, when the uh, when the judge asks me how do I plead, I'll just give him that glazed look. Daddy, I put together some things. Uh, sweetheart, that's all well and good. If you're stealing the Hope Diamond, fortunately, we're just trying to break into a field, and uh, you know how I feel about that. What is that? A gun? Can you keep a gun in a pottery shop? <laughs> Oh, I just, I love this one. What is it? It's an urn. <laughs> an urn? Well, that explains the gun. Okay. Ah, oh, 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 it's incredible. Hey, people die or get killed in this city every day, and the one guy I choose to be is the only dead guy in the city everybody wants to kill. Ah, Micah, you see anything out there? Daddy. Micah. Daddy. Hey, Micah. Oh, oh God. Wait, 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 wait. What happened? Did it get him? I mean, I mean, he, j he just found her. He's got to give her the diamonds to make things right. D did he have time to say goodbye? He didn't die right there. Well, that's really all kind of a blur, you know? I uh, just remember bits and pieces. When he said he wanted to go to the park. We were all alone. He said he wanted me to take care of her. And he promised him. There's a feather. He said, there's magic in something as simple as a feather. Whatever the heck that means. And then he died. Guess what, fuckos? You missed again. Yeah, 500 rounds, and the only damage is a ceramic bat set and a 50-year-old man. Let me ask you something. Is this some sort of master plan? You kill old Tout's associates so we got nobody to play with? What, we trying to bore him to death here? Huh? Make him so despondent at the thought of no buddies that he puts a gun in his mouth? What the fuck's wrong with you? Call critical, Jim. So, um, how many people have you killed? I don't believe I've ever killed a man that didn't deserve it. The shootest, Warner Brothers, 1976. Hey, look, killing's a business. The truth is they all deserved it. Hey, I have a reputation. I clean up people's dirty little secrets. So when that pager rings, I mean you're gonna kill me? 
Haven't you learned the rules of probability and outcomes? Aren't you aware that every question of life or death remains a probability until the outcome? Heaven can wait. Paramount, 1978. Have you ever been to a movie? Tell me more about the girl. Oh, we hadn't spoken in about a week. I tried to contact her after Mike had died, but she'd have nothing of it. So I checked in here at the Gladstone. Couldn't get the old man's voice out of my head. Four years I spent with him, all I could think about was the last thing he said to me. Take care of her. I can't even take care of myself. And then it hit me. partner up on this thing. You know, let me split it 50-50, honor among thieves and all. Don't let me into your group. You're the superhero of crime. You're the one with the big seal in his chest, remember? Obviously you do. Look, I'm not splitting anything with you 50-50. Do you know why? Because there should be some sort of a clause, a Jiggins clause. Do you know what a Jiggins is? It's a congenital idiot, a mongoloid. So every time you do something stupid, every time you give me the Jiggins, I take 5%. Now, it's been one week with the math. That was stupid. That's a Jiggins. 55, 45. It, this has nothing to do with your dad. This is about you. You're, you're greedy. You just want it all for yourself. It's not the diamonds. I want the box. I just want the box. You've obviously touched a nerve. The box, it must mean something to her. Tess, come on. What, what do you want from me? Okay, look, I'm coming up, all right? How many times do I have to say I'm sorry? Ooh. Jesus. 65, 35. It's not a Jiggins, it's a mistake. I mean, it's dark up here. I can't see anything. Failure to comprehend the concept. Jiggins, 70, 30. Let me ask you a question. Are you possessed by the devil? Hmm. That's funny. Very, very funny. And I don't mean ha ha funny. I mean, I've been in prison for 20 years and feel comfortable in pumps. Kind of funny. Ah, suppression of sexual tendencies. Not very full, Jiggins, 75, 25. Okay, that's it. I got my own clause. Tell me if you know what this word means, all right? What the, what the hell is all this crap? You're a freak. Oh, is that your clause? Because that was uh, nine words, well, eight with a contraction. I mean, you asked me if I knew what a, a word meant, that's singular. Word is singular. What's all this crap? You're a freak is plural, in terms of words, anyway. I don't know. It's singular. Why? Because I'm running them all together. Because this, this is my word, my clause, the, the what's all this crap, your freak clause, known henceforth as the clause. Now, every time you break the clause, I take back 10%. Let's see how many times you've broken the clause. How about ever since I met you? Do you know what that means? You not only owe me 100% of that map, but for the next 50 years, you have to kiss my red rosy pucker crack. Whoa. That was nice. Real descriptive. Kiss my rosy red puckered crack. I should shoot you right now. I'm just telling you what happened. I, uh, I didn't realize I was going to be critiqued here. <laughs> What's my name? Excuse me? Critical Jim. Say it. Critical Jim. What do you suppose that means? Where are we going now? Uh, after the diamonds. Under the old man's tree. That's right. Hey. 
Lady 20. Tess found the old man's tree, or what was left of it. And the diamonds, they were safe. Safe behind the walls of a minimum security prison. Now we're moving. Classic plot twist. They'll never see it coming. Now, if you could just get this love story off the ground, we'd have ourselves a picture. It's late in the second act, and we need a backstory. All right. Who is this girl? The girl. deal with the birds they're homing pigeons when my father went to prison they were the only way we could communicate actually works but it was just some story from the war yeah he uh, had them tagged to the house in the foster family lived in. where was your mom she died when I was six sorry when I was eight, I was moved to another foster family and the birds never came back. I thought for sure he'd forgotten me. They found me. What's so important about the box? Dumb little picture. Yes. This thing's worse in terms of endearment. <laughs> but at least we have our tagline. I mean, uh, you thought it was hard breaking out of prison. Try breaking in. <sighs> you are going to break in again. I mean, you got to get the box. I mean, it means so much to her. <sighs> when I get like this, I hate it. Hey, hey, what are you doing? It's for the story. Make it much more interesting. Use your hands now. Gesture, all right? All right. What we need now is some action. Some bang, bang, shoot 'em up action. Just like when I first met you. Now, the diamonds were a moot point. Or were they? I was on my way back to the Gladstone. My worst fear wasn't getting caught. My worst fear was getting killed. I was a man with a death sentence. Somebody wanted me dead. But why? Then it hit me. The tape. 
Maltese Falcon. My God, they wanted the Maltese Falcon. So I waited until it got dark and then I went back to town. This is my life. It always will be. There's nothing else. Just us and the camera and those wonderful people out there in the dark. All right, Mr. DeMille. I'm ready for my close-up. Sunset Boulevard. Paramount, 1950. Somebody's in all kinds of trouble. Trouble? Oh, my puppy's little rogue. So tired of running from the law. The law? The law. The big strapping law. We know your little secret. You're part Dillinger and part Adonis. Could you guys just excuse me for a couple minutes? I'll be right with you. Yo, man, look, hey, you know what? That shit ain't right. Hey, we gotta finish. What the fuck? You got for real, man? What's your problem, bitch? Whoa, whoa, whoa. First thing is, I'm not your bitch. I'm a concerned citizen, and I don't like what you're doing to my country. Well, that's great, Captain America. What do you got to do about it? Hey, I like that Captain America nickname. How about Captain American? The last four letters intrigue me. I can. That should be a fucking motto around here. What can you do when people start doing bullshit like this? You know what? I can kill them. That's what I can do. You know what I want you to do right now? Come over here and draw on your buddy's head right here. I will not deface these United States of America. And the rest of you, all of you, pull out your paint and your crayons and start to face each other. Right now! I thought you little fuckers liked tattoos. Come on! Let's start painting!
That, my friend, is how you button the scene. Classic John Wayne, don't mess with America. You're a true patriot. You know who you sound like? Jack Nicholson. Anybody ever tell you that? Really? Now, we're ready for the third act. I know how to get the diamonds. Do you know how to fire a gun? Hello, my name is Cletus Tout. I have reason to believe that my life is in danger. You'll never guess who just walked into the 14th precinct. Fuck! 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 Have they seen the tape? Evidently, he didn't mention the tape. He claims to have seen it all with his own two eyes. I'll kill that shit and fuck this whole family! Cops are gonna want to question you. What do I do? You do nothing. We need to get the tout. So what do you think? Got an awful lot of the right information. Rowdy Brago? Pretty amazing charge. Would you like to take a little ride? Now you can leave the birds. Tout, there are four corpses here. Please point out the woman you saw Rowdy Virago kill. This is the girl. Let the record state that Mr. Tout identified Merrill Candide. Dr. Savian. Gentlemen, this is Cletus Tout. He just named a suspect in our triple homicide. Nice to see a man like you these days. Nice to be seen. Mr. Tout, you recognize this man? No. What makes you think someone's trying to kill you, Mr. Tau? I got a little greedy with the wrong bunch. Instead of coming to you guys first, I went to the source. Now, what exactly is it you do for a living, Mr. Tau? I'm a photojournalist. I take pictures, compromising pictures. Huh, sounds more like extortion to me. Hey, guys, I'm gonna get a coffee. Anybody need any? No, I'm fine. Meet you outside. Okay. <laughs> Talk to the DA. We're gonna put you up in a safe house. Uh, that place off Crown? Rosedale Mansion? No, no, no safe house. It's too dangerous. They can get to me there. You got a better suggestion? 
I want to go to jail. I don't get it. Who goes to jail unless they have? This guy's on a make. I can smell it. It's too smart. What jail did he say he wanted to go to? Clary Brand. A minimum security? Mm hmm. Well, maybe he's on the story. Check in with Cleary Brand. All right, see if they got anybody important inside. Delaney, I want you to find out everything about our Mr. Toad. All right, go to his house, talk to his neighbors. Horst, go to the TV show he works for. Raph and I'll work the streets, see if we can pin this on Virago. About the only good thing I can think of is if he's in jail, he ain't going nowhere. agreed upon that I should be given no special privileges, the thought being I would draw no undue attention to myself. I made only two requests, that I be able to keep my birds with me at all times, and that I be allowed to keep up with my gardening. I told him it leveled my head. Why do you suppose he's digging there? I don't know. But I'm so goddamned intrigued by this guy, I just about let him drop a shovel anywhere. The plan was perfect. I had an answer for everything. I just can't put a finger on town. Nobody can. You know, the guy thinks he's a secret agent. That journal show he works for, you know what they call him? Bells and whistles. Costumes, face paint, mustaches, anything to get the story. And nobody knows who he is? I don't think they want to. Never let yeah, Mr. Tout's a real piece of work. Something's not right. It's like we're getting all the right answers, but from the wrong stool pigeons. Do me a favor. I call Cleary Brand, pull Tout's prints. We're gonna cross-check him against the FBI computer.
got a visitor. a few minutes. Visiting hours are only until 4 p.m. Any gross conduct in the visit will be terminated. There are families present. You may hold hands. You may kiss. Once again, we ask discretion with regards to this act. If you wish to terminate the visit, just wave and I'll be over presently. So what do you got for me? Union Station. The locker south of the clock. The key is with the blind man at the paper stand under the clock. Uh, he's a friend of mine. He's there from uh, 6 in the morning till 10 o'clock at night. And the, uh, the diamonds? Uh, the, the Gladstone Hotel. Your room's been taken care of for the month. They're in a small box. Behind the TV, you'll find them just next to the cable port. You have a plan? A uh, plan? I just want to get the heck out of here. <laughs> you know, you should probably do the same thing. I mean, get out of the city. Already taken care of. <laughs> Thought I'd try the train. Guess it's uh, the romantic in me. First class to Canada, 10 p.m. The three of us leave tonight. The three of us? The birds. Oh, right. Well, that's too bad. I mean, uh, she's grown kind of fond of the little one. Well, uh, if you break out in time, I'm sure she'd love to say goodbye. They're, uh, they're green. I could have sworn they were brown. Um, your picture. Sorry, folks. Kiss her and say goodbye. Time to go. Tell Tripp I need to see him. plan had gone off without a hitch. In retrospect, I guess I really only made one mistake. Tess. I was in love with her and I let her go. What, does my desk look like a lounge to you? You got nothing to do? The FBI called your print searches in. to Rosedale Mansion. You got him at Rosedale Mansion. Full critical jump. There's a diner across the street from the hotel. You go there just in case. You don't do anything unless you hear from me. 
You understand? Yeah. And don't improvise. What if the guy... Don't. Can... You'll fuck it up. You two cheese dicks couldn't improvise a fart after eating the three bean salad. Now get the fuck out of here. Trip. I hope you're sitting down, because you won't believe this. What is it? Well, our print search came in, and your Mr. Tout hasn't been behind a video camera for the past four years. He's been in front of one, under surveillance at a little maximum security prison in North Carolina. You don't say. Lieutenant Tripp, may I introduce you to Trevor Finch, escape con. Hey, Finch. Yeah? Bring him in. Look, you don't want me. You got three murders to deal with. One of them's a friend of mine. I got enough evidence to help you bust these guys. You just gotta hear me out. Look at this. It's limp toast. Look at this. Stuff's fucking filthy. What are you doing? It's filthy fuck. It's a fork. It's, it's, it ain't jewelry. Would you like to take a ride down a Union Station? I gotta tell you, Finch, it's one interesting line of bullshit. Break out of jail and fall right into a hit. I just can't wait to see where it goes from here. What's the name of that Burt Reynolds picture with the banjo? Oh, yeah, yeah, the, the one with that retarded kid. <laughs> he was good, that guy. Yeah, yeah, he, he was good, he was good. Deliverance. <sighs> Cletus Sherman Tout. Born October 12, 1967. Christ, it's almost perfect. <laughs> one question. Why jail? comfortable there. If somebody's trying to kill you, you go where you feel safe. Keep your mouth shut. There isn't a safer place in jail. And the birds? And the old man's homing pigeons. Can't really track a bird, you know? I had a friend on the outside trying to get me out of the country. Your sexuality is in question. You decide you're gonna hit for the other side. You want yourself some man meat. I understand that. But wouldn't you wait for Burton Reynolds to come down with him? Uh, yeah, you're right. I mean, who says it himself? Hey, I want to bang that fat guy. Exactly. I think you have to approach this from the mountain man's point of view. It's a self-esteem issue, really. If you lose your job, you're not feeling good about yourself, you generally settle for less. You look for the weaker members of the herd. Yeah. yeah you hump the one with the limp. That's good. Yeah, I guess you could say that. I'm sorry. That ain't right. You know what kills me? Farago's gonna walk. Walk? And he murdered that poor girl, and you can't make it stick. Tape or no tape. What are you talking about? We both know the system. You know why Justice wears a blindfold? So she doesn't have to watch. I mean, Justice isn't blind. It's embarrassed. I mean, I've been in trouble with the law ever since I can remember. I made some mistakes, but I paid my dues. You never did anything to hurt anybody. You got three bodies in that morgue. You're gonna get your tape, your hard evidence to put Virago away, but once his attorneys discover the talent was a fabrication, they'll bury it. When you create a talent, what other evidence did you doctor? I mean, I can create any image I want on a computer. That's what I went to jail for in the first place, and you know they're gonna figure that out. Wouldn't you rather not have to deal with any of that at all? bad guy here. Let me disappear. Two months, I would have made parole anyway. You take the tape, you can make it stick. I only need you to do one thing. I need you for once in your life to look the other way. Trip. Run. 
us. You are not going to believe what's on this tape. Call Horstman. I'm going to send a couple of units down to the Empire Social Club. Send a cruiser to pick me up. Outside, I'll be in front of the diner across the street. Listen, Tout, I'm gonna run down to the diner for some coffee. Can I get you some while I'm out? Not a thing. They were all there, the diamonds, all of them. Tess had left me her half, but she got what she wanted. She got her picture. You've all volunteered for a mission, which gives you just three ways to go. You can foul up in training and be shipped back here for immediate execution of sentence, or you can foul up in combat, in which case I will personally blow your brains out. Or you can do as you're told, in which case, you just might get by. The Dirty Dozen, MGM, 1967. M as in McQueen, 0122622644F, as in Fonda. T as in Tracy, K as in Kubrick. You've got 90 minutes, or I let him go. Got it. What's the word? It's got him there at the Gladstone. So now what? I wire the money, he waits for it to clear, it's standard. <laughs> Rowdy Virago, you're under arrest for the murder of Merrill Candy. Cuff him, read him his rights. You have the right to remain silent. What's the problem? It's been 90 minutes. Why hasn't he killed him yet? I don't know. We have a major problem. We have no ending. I mean, it's a major flaw. I, I love the moral message, but the two things that the moviegoer is going to cry out for are missing. The moviegoer? The moviegoer, John and Jane Q. Public. First, they're going to want you to get back with the girl, but you screwed that up. And second, they're going to want some gunplay. You know, and I can't shoot you. You're the good guy. We got to get you out of here. You got to find that girl. You got to kill somebody.
Hero, are you? Yes. Cut me loose. Cut me loose. What time is it? It's nine thirty. You got about thirty minutes, buddy. Come on. Get yourself up. Look, you're the leading man. Straighten up a little bit. Listen to me. Trains of Canada. We got a Union Station on tracks one and three. What about the diamonds? I need one. Uh, or maybe a few more so we can get started. Buy a big house. We got 29 minutes. No, people don't belong to people. Of course they do. Breakfast at Tiffany's, Paramount, 1961. Singing in the rain, just singing in the rain. What a glorious feel, and I'm happy again. 
I'm laughing at clouds so dark up above. The sun's in my heart, and I'm ready for love.